Continuing on from the last video, we are today going to be practicing with the airbrush so we've got a bit of an idea of how to paint. So we've connected the hose to the outlet for the air compressor. Guess now it's time to turn it on, see what it sounds like as it charges up the cylinder. A few moments later. Well, actually a minute later, and it does get a little bit loud as it rattles towards the end. In fact, it sounds like a diesel. Okay, that's it done. There is also a fair amount of vibration, as you can see with the camera wobbling on the table. So now what we need to do is have a look at our airbrush, which is here, and see what sort of pressure we're getting. If we have a close look at the dial, if we depress the air supply, okay, it seems to be at the full setting. Try to adjust this, apparently, we lift this and rotate it counterclockwise. And we're not seeing any change in the dial, but if we press the air lead, we can see that there is a difference. So I guess the best way to adjust it is while you're letting the air through the airbrush. There we go. That gets us down to about just between 15 and 20 psi. To get an idea of how this actually works with the air flowing through it, we're just going to put a small amount of water into the bowl. Okay, so there's a little bit in there, and we can listen to the air compressor start up. Good timing. So, press the button down to start the airflow, and then pull back. We can hear the water coming through. We're only a couple of inches away from the board. Being a complete novice, I had no idea what to do with an airbrush, so I consulted the Book of Armaments and found a website called Airbrush Modeler, which goes into the specifics of what pressure you should set the airbrush and the compressor at to run properly. And it gave some bit of a breakdown with regards to the benefits and drawbacks of the wrong air pressure, which can control the paint atomization, whether or not it's going to clog on you, the t nature of overspray, whether that will occur or not, the overall finish, whether it be speckled or drooling in paint, and also whether it's going to dry early and the necessary distance from the model to achieve the results that you're after. Uh, they had a really good table, depending upon the type of airbrush that you had, whether it be gravity feed, side feed or siphon. And this is a gravity feed and it tells you based on the nozzle size what to do with respect to changing air pressures to calibrate and also the nature of the detail that you're trying to achieve. And uh, so we set everything up and ended up with a PSI of about 15 to try and get the best results given this configuration. It was suggested that you keep the airflow on and control the amount of fluid that comes out by pulling back and then releasing. And pulling back increases the volume and you can see it's making it too wet. So we pull back a bit further, spread that spray pattern out. And we might have half an idea of how to use this thing. Okay. Cool. So let's give this a shot on a sacrificial piece of plastic to see how it actually applies paint and if we can put it on without causing an absolute mess. First things first, we're going to put a little bit of distilled water in here because apparently you don't put any inks or paint straight in. So we'll put a little bit of distilled water in first and we'll get a shaken bottle of primer. And this one's black and we'll put a few drops in here 
or not because it's sealed under the cap. So we might have to open that up. Ta-da! There would be a seal. So we might as well remove that sucker. This might work. And we'll add a few drops. Don't get too crazy. See how crap we are first. Okay, with the ink and water in there, I'll just put a brush in and give it a little bit of a mix. Some somewhat thickish and splatters. I can paint things as well, apparently. One sacrificial plastic model. An old model of a Volkswagen that I've had kicking around since the dawn of time that I tried spraying with aerosols outside in the wind and it made an absolute mess of it. And so it got stripped back. And we're going to see if we can actually paint it with an undercoat without making more of a mess of it. So we'll give that a bit of a shot now and see how we get on. Okay, so here we have our model. We're just going to try on the inside first, so if I absolutely botch it, it's not so crucial. The idea was to start slow and steady, just letting a small amount of paint out at a time, uh, which wasn't really a great idea, as you'll see, because we got blockages as a consequence of the paint drying within the airbrush itself and then needing a higher pressure to release that. What we didn't take into consideration was also the ambient air temperature, which was relatively warm and acrylics tend to dry somewhat quickly and uh, I wasn't helping the situation by doodling and trying to apply it in slow progressive quantities. The idea was to experiment, try different methods, see what worked best. So it's a bit of hit and miss as you can see. At times you went a little bit heavier, other times probably a little bit too light as we found out towards the end clearly with regards to the drying of the paint and having trouble getting anything out. Uh, so we moved on to the outside and uh, gave that a bit of a go. Working from the roof, you can see we just went backwards and forwards, just lightly dusting it. Uh, potentially, yes, it could have been a lot heavier. Clearly we'll see that towards the end. But uh, dusting it like that apparently gives it good adhesion. Uh, so we tried a few different methods, but uh, it looked quite patchy because again we're just putting on a small quantity of paint. It was the slow and steady wins the race approach uh, rather than all at once because I had no idea if it was going to run and I didn't want to have to go through the exercise of sanding that back. Uh, but we're going to see later on in the video what had to be done as a consequence of having to sand things back. But. Uh, we can see that uh, using a little bit more pressure uh, and a little bit more of the paint produces a better finish and it also has a sort of a glossy appearance suggesting that yes you've actually wet the surface rather than spraying dust onto it and in the end this is what we ended up with now we had a bit of an issue while we were using the rear brush because there was constant air leaking out of the nozzle even though the trigger was not depressed and a little bit of research discovered that there's an air closing screw that is situated in the bottom of the airbrush and that needed to be tightened in about a quarter of a turn which would then properly seat the spring and allowed the valve to close properly and stop the leaking air. A little bit of experimentation later with some different uh, primers and we sort of gave it a bit of a what people refer to as a xenothal highlight uh, if you really do that with cars who knows but anyway we sprayed it with some white over the top just to brighten it up in preparation of hitting it with some ink it's amazing how many rabbit holes you can go down if you look at YouTube too often and find out all this and other interesting information about what's available in the hobby and there was the suggestion of using inks because they're finer so I grabbed some of those 
because uh, they look pretty and we thought we'd give a bit of a go painting the car we've got a genesis green which says it's a pearlescence a really fancy bright color thought that's going to be fantastic but uh, i didn't realize it's actually a metallic and it has large metallic flakes in it which became obvious when we started spraying and unfortunately using a 0.2 nozzle it was a little bit too fine for the flex and there was constant blockages and it was spraying very dusty despite using a high pressure and effectively all i did was coat it in snow and it had a disgusting rough texture when it was all done so that was a bit terrible and required that we go back and actually wet sand it with wet dry uh, to try and smooth the surface down and get a better finish so thank you for sitting around and watching this rather tedious paint drying exercise of me learning to play with an airbrush and make a mess of a toy car in the hope that when I start playing with the Warhammer models, which will be the next video, that we'll actually be able to do something and make it look quite good. Uh, so thanks for being here. See you next time. And hopefully uh, we can continue on this little journey of my discovery of Warhammer and getting back into modeling. Thank you one and all.